All right, how's everybody doing today? Welcome to You Don't Know Ball. And I'm so excited to be bringing you some content from the at-home studio. Finally got a setup here. I'm kind of mid-move right now, but regardless, had to get it going. I see Hunter making waves. I'm like, man, let me get it on. I gotta, I gotta bring the YouTube content to y'all also. But look, bullshit aside, let's get right into it. What I got planned for y'all today, and what I'm gonna start doing until we obviously run out, and then we'll move on to something else. But it's mock season, as y'all know. And look, the reality is, we got to do division by division, three round mocks. It's only right. And with that said, I'm starting off with the Bears. We're starting off number one. We might as well start with the NFC North. That's probably how I'm going to go about this. Whatever team's in next order, we're probably going to go with their division. So it might seem random, but it's really not. So with all that said, let's cook. And here at number one, we got Chicago Bears. And again, for me personally, there's not much to think about here. Uh, and there won't be. We're going Caleb Williams uh, for multiple reasons. But... The only thing you need to know is Caleb Williams is the best player in this draft, and he has the intangibles to be one of the greatest players we've seen in our lifetimes. Now, again, I can't guarantee anything. I'm not saying you're telling you that he's going to hit his ceiling. I said if he hits his ceiling. And I don't know what the Bears staff's going to do with him, but all I know is as a staff, if you're anyone competent, you can't pass on Caleb Williams at number one. So with that said, we're taking Caleb Williams at number one. See how the board's falling to us here? Interesting. We had Marv go number two, Drake May at three, Malik four, Brock five, Joe Alt six, Rome seven, and then Jaden eight, which leaves us with an interesting spot here, number nine for the Bears, because go a lot of different ways. But I think I'm going to take a look here see who we got available. But yeah, so the way the board fell as of right now, I'm going Olu Fashanu. Just getting an absolute pass protector. And obviously, like we've said before, the man is nowhere near his ceiling in terms of... So it's kind of like this, this class is a little bit more where you can see who the guys who already have the high floors are, but maybe the potential isn't as sky high. But with Olu, it's where maybe the floor is a little lower, but I do think his ceiling is arguably the highest of any of the tackles in the class, which is what makes it such an interesting pick. But no matter what, if Olu falls to here, you got to take it. And on the clock here, number 11, we got the Vikings. So, and obviously not, not much action in between here. The Jets, interestingly enough, went with Jerzon Newton at number 10. So then obviously here we got a lot, a lot of options for the Vikings. And I don't necessarily know which route I want to go. But I'm going to tell you this. Since the board fell me this way, and I've been big on this, and a lot of people are going are gonna to hate me for this, and that's fine. Because a lot of people haven't, in my opinion, I'll say, seen the light yet. And it just depends on how you view it. Again, I view it personally where in the run-heavy scheme, he didn't get a chance to flash as much. He really just kind of did what they asked him to do nine times out of ten. And yes, he had bad reps, but every college QB has bad reps. And at his peak, he's a very physical runner. You can tell he's going to be a dual-threat player. He's got a great arm. He can put it deep. He can definitely put it there under pressure. He's got a lot of good intangibles. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we're going J.J. McCarthy right here to the Vikings at number 11, stealing them away from the Broncos, which very well could happen. And if you don't, if you don't believe me yet, just wait. You're going to start seeing soon. But then here at number 25, we got the Packers back on the clock. And interesting here again because I could go a lot of different routes. Definitely could go a lot of different routes. I got to see how the board fell for me before we make a decision. And then see this thing is when I get a chance to look at the board, I don't think I have to think about this too long. Again, I'm going Byron Murphy the second right here. Win rate was off the charts in college. Just looking like an absolute stud coming in. Immediate impact. Pass rush player. And still very good in the run game as well. I think he'll be exact what the Packers need. And looking here at 29. Got the Detroit Lions. And definitely got a lot of options here the way the board fell. Now, again, though, we know the Lions need interior more than anything. And that is, I do believe, what they're going to target. And the way the board fell, looking right now, I'd say there's nothing more logical. And seen again, as we said on our most recent mock, me and Hunter did together. Look, Zach Frazier rising up the boards quickly. And uh, the Lions would be very lucky, I do believe, to get Zach Frazier. And I think he's a great fit. We'll go Zach Frazier right here to the Detroit Lions. Moving on to the second round. Got Packers back on the board. And for this one... I don't think I have to think too much. I think it, this actually, again, won't, just falls right in my lap. You might think about it a little. You might say, 
you know, obviously there, there's definitely, it's not like this is a no brainer, but for me right now is the way that I have, cause I still have a lot of tape to watch. I still have a lot of players to watch. I still, right. We're still very early in the draft process. Let me be clear. I'm still far from being certain and solidified on all the way that I view this besides basically Caleb Williams. Like I said, Caleb's the one guy I'd see with certainty, but anyways, with Troy Fatanu here, I, I like what I've seen so far. I like how the physical player that he is. I think to potentially maybe, you know, some versatility. Like if, if, he, if you don't like the way he's playing a tackle, interestingly, you, you, he's one of these guys where you could move him around, see where you like him on the line. So with that said, Packers need some O-line help. We're going Troy Fatanu right here. All right. And then right up next, we got the Vikings at 42. And again, definitely a lot of, a lot of options, a lot of needs. Take a look and see how the board fell. I'll tell you what, though. Now, interestingly enough, because I think, you know, looking at it first, I was thinking Chris Jenkins. But then I'm saying to myself, nah, we're not going Chris Jenkins. We, in fact, are going to go chop Robinson. Because we know, as of right now, look, the Vikings might be losing their boy. Daniel Hunter might be out in free agency. He's definitely going to request the bag. Chop Robinson is one of those guys where, yeah, he's also definitely much more of a project, but I think at the same time of that, he's very, very far from hitting his ceiling if he can get in the right system. And I think getting in that Packers defense, getting on a, you know, a D line where you're going to be having a lot of rushers at once, getting some blitz opportunities, you know, and just see how he is in the run game. You can rotate him. Packers already have a decent D line room. I think adding Chop Robinson right here with the value that we're getting, I love it personally. We got the pack back on the board here at 57. Now, this, interesting, because I do, see, see both these Texas boys right here that are coming up, I love both of them. And I, I think, though, it's much more of an easy decision for me because, and I, let, let me be clear as well. Normally, I would say, right, running back this early, I don't know if I like it, right? But I think Jonathan Brooks, you're getting a great player. I think the Packers are going to need, uh, we know, the Packers need running back. Whether you want to consider that Aaron Jones is getting old, or you want to say A.J. Dillon isn't the guy and he's just more of a rotational, uh, situational player, right? And that's right. That's how I would be viewing it. I'm saying, let's bring in Jonathan Brooks, get him on the rookie deal because nobody wants to pay running backs nowadays. And if we can get Jonathan Brooks to come in and play really elite with Jordan Love over these next four or five years. So I'm going to say with that being said, I'm going Jonathan Brooks right here to the Packers. We got the Lions right here at pick 61. And, you know, probably still, to be honest, if we're looking at this, even if the Lions are going to say, I'm, you know, looking at it in the interior. But the way the board's falling to me right now, not necessarily sure how I feel about that. Maybe I'd potentially be thinking about waiting a little bit for that. But I got to take a look here and see. But I think the way the board is falling to me right now, I'm saying, look, Again, we really need a DB. Kalen Carson's right here. I'm going to say the DB is more important, I think, on the draft board as of right now. You got, and went right on here too, we got Kalen Carson a little higher. I think we're going to go with the less reachy pick. And again, that, this could completely change. I, I might be saying something completely different in the next couple months. But as of right now, the Lions really need a DB. We know this. So with that said, give me Kalen Carson right here. Lions back on the board up next. And again, see, this is why I didn't... I, I didn't feel the need to reach because we're coming up here again soon. And I, I do believe that our boy right here is still going to be sitting for us. And he is. Look at that. From Boston College, Christian Mahogany. We need another interior player. We got ourselves a couple interior guys. A couple for in the first three rounds. It sounds like a, the perfect draft for, to me for the Lions. We got the Bears up here next at pick 75. When I tell you I really had to sit here and think about this for a minute, like, I had to chop definitely at least a solid minute to, I'm saying at least out this. But I said, you know what? Think about it. Looking over the board. Say, you know what? Let's let's go get our receiver right here and now. Right? It's like we went QB. We went tackle. We know the Bears need definitely another weapon. I'm thinking we got Jalen McMillan right here. Somebody, I think, who maybe fallen through the cracks a little bit because of that surrounding cast over there, especially with Rome. Right? Maybe forgetting about some of the other guys. I think Jalen McMillan could come in, have a very productive career. I love Jalen Jalen Miller right here to the Bears. And then we got the pack on the clock right here. And I'm going to have to think again. The later we get into, I'm telling you all, the deeper I get into this, this mock, it is, the harder it gets. All right, after giving us some thought here, we're going Dajrian Taylor Demerson, Texas Tech safety. And again, because if you're the Packers, and Packers fans will tell you first, like they need some safety help up there. 
And I feel like the longer we press off this need, the more we might feel like we're reaching. I think we feel pretty comfortable right here with Daydream, so we're going to lock that in. And then coming up next, right back, pack right back at it. And then I'm comfortable locking in right here, McKinley Jackson, uh, Texas A&M interior. And I think, again, we're feeling, we're, we're feeling needs. We see, hey, we're, we have needs to fill. We're addressing them as such. It's exactly how we're going about this mock. Lions coming up right here. What do we want to do for the Lions? What are we thinking for the Lions? After giving us some thought, looking over the rest of the board, I'm going Jerry and Jones here. I'm saying, you know what? We're loading up on DBs, right? We, we feel like for the Lions, we need just more and more DBs, more and more DB depth. If someone gets injured too, right now, now we need more guys. So I'm comfortable going deep on the DBs. Jerry and Jones, welcome to Detroit. There we have it. Our first three round mock. Thanks so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to have more of these coming to you each and every day. We're going to move on next to, I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, that will be the NFC East. Because like I said, I'm just going to do this in order of the draft picks. That's how it starts. So, because you know the commanders come up next to number two. We went number one. We started with the NFC North. If you enjoyed, drop a like, drop a sub. We would love to see you back. Thanks so much for watching.